Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show. In this video, we'll look at variability in human aging and genetic variants. So, not my catchiest title, but it is what I like to think is quite a catchy topic right now. And so the aim of this video is to introduce you to why there's variability in human aging and how genetic variants are key to us understanding the biochemical underpinnings of aging. Basically, I'm trying to review this recent review paper that came out in Nature. But before I dive straight in, what is aging? Well, so one definition is that it is the progressive deterioration of an organism over time. The problem is, aging is complex and takes a long time to study. A lifetime, in fact. Not gonna lie, I stole that, that pun. But anyway, I've done a video before on the different hallmarks of what actually underpins the aging mechanism. And so I'll put the link to that video in the description. But in this video, we really want to address what causes the differences between different people in terms of their aging rates. And given that on the whole, the population is somewhat aging and there's a huge burden on healthcare costs, it's important that we can understand what's actually driving these aging mechanisms and how we can actually prevent them. So where does this variation in human aging come from? So variation comes from both different genetic variants and also from environmental factors. But in this video, we're gonna look at the genetic variants. So how can you actually study genetic variants involved in aging? Well, you can do genome-wide association studies. Now, I've already done an entire video about genome-wide association studies, what they are and their pros and cons. But to briefly summarize, they are studies whereby you can take a phenotype, in this case it would be aging, and look at genetic variants that are associated with that phenotype. But unlike genome-wide association studies for conditions such as Alzheimer's disease, where it's more you either have the condition or you don't, how do you actually do uh, genome-wide association studies for the complex trait that is aging? And how do you ascertain uh, the extent to which someone's aging? Now, from what I've understood, there have been two main ways of doing this so far. There's either a discrete way or a continuous way. So the discrete way to do a genome-wide association study for aging is to directly compare the genomes of people who are long-lived, i.e. like they live longer than 90 years of age, to younger control individuals. Whereas the continuous um, meth method, whereby you treat the age or the longevity in this case as a continuous trait and you measure indirectly the extent of the aging phenotype by using parental age. So either the age of the parents um, whose genome you're studying or the age of their death. Now, I hope that made sense. So this recent study used the continuous method to look for genetic variants associated with aging. And they identified 12 different DNA regions that seem to affect lifespan. And if you go to this podcast here, you can listen to the authors explain about their research, which I recommend doing. But even though they found these 12 different variants, and I'll talk about a couple of them later on, there's still limitations to this approach in terms of understanding human aging. The main one being in this continuous approach that the imperfect sharing of genotype between a parent and the child dilutes the strength of these statistical associations that are needed to perform genome-wide association studies. Nonetheless, many of these loci identified have got links and associations with cardiometabolic conditions, which kind of links back to the hallmarks of aging. But as I said, I'll, I'll go into more detail in just a bit. So how else can you analyse the genetic variation linked to aging? Now, what you can do, as described in this Nature Review paper, is look at shared genetic effects on different age-associated diseases. So what I mean by this is that different age-associated diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease, chronic kidney disease, coronary artery disease, osteoarthritis, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and also with two different cancer types, which are prost prostate and breast cancer, Oh, and colorectal cancer, <laughs> three. Um, and these diseases or cancers where they've already been genome-wide association studies, you can then look at the variants that were identified in those studies and look at um, traits where the same loci has been associated <clears throat> with more than three of these different diseases. 
And so this assumption can be made because there is a close association between the disease and mortality risk dynamics. They both seem to be exponential in terms of the likelihoods of either death or getting diseases. So if we go back to this figure, we can see that coronary artery disease, osteoarthritis, type 2 diabetes and stroke correlate negatively with parental longevity, but there isn't so much of an association between prostate cancer and breast cancer. So variants associated with different age-associated diseases are not necessarily important for all different age-associated diseases. But from doing this analysis, nine different genetic loci have been identified as hotspots. Okay, so here are the different loci. The first one, which is CASC8, which stands for Cancer Susceptibility Candidate 8, um, actually encodes a long non-coding RNA and is linked with breast, prostate and colorectal cancer. The second one is CDKN 2A, 2B or 2AS1. So this loci encodes two, well, different genes and two of them include P16 and P21, which are both tightly linked with cellular senescence, which, as I mentioned in a previous video, is a hallmark of ageing. And interestingly, um, the 2AS1 is another long non-coding RNA. And so this kind of raises the starts to raise the point that some of these variants aren't mutations necessarily in the genes themselves, but are more about regulating the expression of these different genes instead. So the third one is TCF7L2, which is linked to beta cell proliferation and insulin response. And again, it's got links with cancer. Um, and type 2 diabetes. Then there's the HLA DQA1 loci, which is encoding the histocompatibility complex components, and that's linked with chronic inflammation, again, something that's associated with the hallmarks of aging. Then the fifth loci is ABO, which is the loci that encodes the different antigens that kind of dictate your blood group. And so, so far, one of the O antigens seems to be the variant associated most with longevity. Unfortunately, it's not my blood type. Um, then we have SHTB3, which encodes the lymphocyte adapter protein and is linked with inflammation and demune response. So interestingly, this isn't the SH2B1 or B2 uh, gene, which is linked with IGF-1 signaling, which is actually also linked to aging, but that isn't the variant that was found here. Then we have FEG, FA, FTO, and they are both also linked with inflammation and the immune response. FTO, I've talked about again in a previous video, it's linked with obesity and also, well, the, there's a lot that isn't really fully known about this gene yet. It's a very interesting gene. And then lastly, we have TART, which encodes telomerase, which um, extends telomeres. Again, which is a hallmark of telomere shortening is a hallmark of aging, which I've explained before. So if you are interested in understanding these different hallmarks, I kind of do recommend, well, well, obviously watching my video, but just looking at reading the literature around the hallmarks of aging. Anyhow, back to this list of loci, you may notice that the some loci are missing, which you might have thought should be there. So one of these is APOE, in particular the APOE4 variant, which is one of the most significant variants associated with Alzheimer's disease. And again, because of its link with Alzheimer's disease and also cardiometabolic diseases, it is one of the most significant loci associated with parental lifespan. It just wasn't picked up by looking at the shared traits across different diseases. Another variant that also was in the list was FOXO3A, which encodes FOXO3A, that should say fossil 3 a I just now just said fossil 3 a too many times. And anyway, this encodes a transcription factor that influences energy metabolism, cell cycle regulation, and inflammation. And so it's very tightly linked to the hallmarks of aging. But, you know, the variants seem so far have only seen, been seen in the longest lived 1% of people. So it seems that generically and on a population scale, the variant doesn't really seem to have a a major impact in lifespan. But again, due to the limitations of genome-wide association studies, it could be a variant that could become noticed when 
a larger population of people are sequenced and traits are looked at. But what studies like this show is that there is a genetic component to ageing and lifespan and the fact is studies in different organisms, so for example one model organism C. elegans, they've done a study where they had genetically identical C. elegans and even then they died at different different times despite also having very similar if not the same environmental conditions and so this also suggests that the variability is somewhat spontaneous and aging itself is a spontaneous process and so this added complexity just makes aging <laughs> by itself really difficult to study but this is also why it is so interesting so it seems besides genetics and lifestyle factors it's a bit of a roll of the guy roll of the dice <laughs> in terms of how long you're going to live or age and you know we can't all be like Mr Burns who seems to have every single disease possible but because they're in perfect balance he doesn't suffer from any of them <laughs> we're not like that um the likelihood is there's many different age associated diseases but if we can actually look at the genetic variants and identify the genes associated it enables us to better understand the ageing mechanism and to therefore develop drugs and targets for those drugs which could help to prevent or slow down the process of ageing itself. So uh, hopefully you found this uh, video interesting. If you want to see more videos go check out this one by Family Fitness. It's really recent, it's an uh, interview with David Sinclair who's very, I know, on it in the ageing field. Um, and again, check out my other videos all about the hallmarks of ageing. But yes, thanks for listening and see you next time.